Good evening all. I think I'll bore you with one more installment of the CC Johnson 219 Improved Zipper video. I touched on the previous video about uh, times around uh, the Second War and even before that, uh, during that time period between the First War and the Second War I think many viewers might think of the Roaring Twenties and the Depression of the 1930s. Well, in most of Canada, um, the transition from World War I into uh, the Depression of uh, the 1930s was, let's just say there was no high point as we see in, in popular uh, movies, The Great Gatsby and others. Um, Except in the very urban centers, Canada didn't experience that uh, brief, uh, shall we say, uh, huge economic uplift. And as a result, ammunition was short, scarce to come by, and expensive. So, some shooters, when they were shooting a rifle similar to this, would go to this old, savage manufactured ammunition for 22 Savage High Power. And they would use this ammunition as a source for brass for their improved zippers. Uh, a little bit later on, this would be uh, this would be uh, well, well well after the Great War. These this ammunition is easily uh, 90 years old. And then uh, for quite some time, ammunition was then again 22 Savage High Power ammunition but uh, made by uh, CIL here in Canada and again as you can see from the box someone has turned this into a 219 zipper and then uh, after the war uh, you could buy uh, 219 zipper ammunition from most sporting goods stores this would be up until the early 1960s is this box and uh, but again, it wasn't ideal. At this point, the 22 Savage High Power was an obsolete cartridge that you, you couldn't... It was almost impossible to source brass. And then a little bit later, CIL would do runs of various obsolete cartridges in unprimed brass, as this one was. And these were available up until the, uh, the late 70s. Back to the rifle. Just get in on that little pre pretty part right there. As I mentioned in one of the comments, I believe to Totally Brown, was that uh, this rifle was uh, part of one of many stories in the uh, in the Peterson's Rifle Shooter magazine of August 1998. And try to get in here. That's a picture of the rifle you're looking at there. And it's called High Wall from Heaven. And uh, this rifle was rescued. It was old single shot. I won't go into the, the story so much. It's the fact that uh, I did get the rifle. I did uh, do some basic restoration. Strip some paint, uh, some overspray, some other such material that actually in the end protected it. When I went to pick up the rifle, my understanding was I was just buying the rifle, the fellow I purchased this from, uh, well, he came out with a box. Came out with this, this lovely Lyman box. Pretty much as you see here, a little beat up, but not bad, really. Actually, I'd say quite good. And uh, my heart stopped. There was no pitter-patter. It was just my heart stopped. And uh, inside this beautiful box was this lovely Lyman Super Target Spot. It was a big day, this household. However... That's a brief 
trail end to the uh, the improved zipper story. The uh, as you can see here, once again, I've got the the four related cartridges together with the uh, what we would call a 219 improved zipper on your right, and then Elwood Epsis 22 Marcianti Blue Streak. The 22 Savage High Power, which was the uh, the parent case to these these three from the left, and then of course the 219 improved zipper for the CC Johnson rifle. The uh, pretty formidable cartridges for uh, varmint hunting in their time, and I decided later on to improve upon that and that's what we'll go into in the next video. I'm just going to tune in here. Um, if you haven't used this KeroSafe material, it's a good idea to pick some up. You can probably get it at Brownells or uh, uh, you might be able to get it uh, at a good sporting goods store. It's uh, Effectively you put a, uh, a plug in the chamber beneath the chamber of your of your rifle here just out of Kleenex or foam or something of that nature and you uh, gently melt the KeroSafe material into the chamber of the firearm and in this case with the high wall it's quite easy the breech is well it's wide open um, point the rifle with the muzzle to the floor gently melt the KeroSafe material in Give it a few moments, and uh, when it hardens, it actually shrinks by a precisely known rate. And that allows you to uh, punch the, uh, the cast of the chamber out of the rifle. And at one time, as I did with this rifle, you could send the, uh, you could send the chamber cast of the KeroSafe material to RCBS, and they made me a set of forming dies, because no dies came with this rifle. That was something that was somewhat amusing uh, about purchasing this rifle from uh, the owner previous to me. I don't think he ever used it or shot it at all. Uh, he was quite, uh, he was very sorry and in fact he felt somehow that he was cheating me that this ammunition, that this rifle, that A, he couldn't supply ammunition and B, his understanding was is that uh, they no longer made ammunition for this rifle and that he was in effect sending selling me a rifle at that point it was just for a mere pittance uh, for a rifle that I couldn't shoot but anybody watching this video today would be able to start the process of making ammunition for themselves just as I did at any rate that's just a step in the uh, so the last steps of telling you a little bit about the the rifle and a little bit of its history and its 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 and my 15 minute brush with uh, fame on a major American news uh, sorry major American firearm magazine. Um, I'll give you a I'll give you a brief moment here and I'll set something into the the bags that we'll cover next time in our next video. And uh, this rifle, well, it's a uh, it's a departure from the C.C. Johnson rifle. It's got an interesting story and I'd like to share it with you next time. Thanks so much and take care.